One of the great mysteries of ancient genetics is the Denisovans. In a massive new discovery, the skull of an ancient human found in northeastern China may belong to this recently discovered human species, according to several new studies. In fact, the well-preserved skull is the largest hominin skull on record. Furthermore, a controversial analysis of the cranium revealed that the skull may be the most closely related species to Homo sapiens, even closer than Neanderthals, who are thought to be our closest relatives, a hypothesis which we find to be highly compelling. The researchers had never seen a skull like this before. His head was huge, containing a large brain, with a long, low shape and massive brow ridge over the eyes. His face, nose and jaws were broad, and he had very large eyes. Nevertheless, his face was low in height, with delicate cheekbones, and was tucked back under the brain case, as in a modern human. The scientists also discovered minor depressions on the top of ancient man's head that could be healed wounds, but there is no evidence of the cause of death. Further investigation revealed that the skull most likely belonged to a male who died around the age of 50. An analysis of the skull revealed typical archaic human features, but also found a mosaic of primitive and derived characteristics, setting itself apart from all the other Homo species. In fact, if the 330,000-year-old Jebel Irhud skull from Morocco can be classified as early Homo sapiens, merely because of a few facial features, then this opens up many other fossils to this classification as well. When studying the skull, the researchers examined its shape in depth, analyzing over 600 characteristics. The team then used a powerful computer to create trees of relatedness with other early human fossils. After millions of tree-building processes, scientists arrived at the most efficient trees. The family tree analysis revealed another bombshell. The researchers believe that the common ancestor of humans and Neanderthals lived more than one million years ago, which is approximately 400,000 years earlier than previously thought. The findings indicate that the cranium and a few other fossils from China belong to a third lineage of humans that coexisted with Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. The family tree showed that the newly discovered skull is more closely related to Homo sapiens than Neanderthals. In other words, this group had a more recent common ancestor with modern humans than Neanderthals did. Controversially, this would make the Harbin group, which also includes the Dali skull, a sister species of Homo sapiens. According to multiple reports, the man who discovered the skull was working on Harbin City's Dongjiang Bridge. Indeed, the story behind this ancient skull is worthy of an Indiana Jones film. In 1933, a Chinese man reportedly discovered it in Harbin City in Heilongjiang, China's northernmost province. Incredibly, the man buried it in an abandoned well, a traditional Chinese method of concealing treasures. According to the researchers, the skull remained in the well for 85 years. To verify that claim, the researchers conducted a series of geochemical analyses including X-ray fluorescence, rare earth elements, and strontium isotopes to investigate the skull's unique chemical makeup. The findings supported the claim, as the chemical composition of the ancient skull was similar to that of fossils from humans and other mammals discovered in the Harbin area between the Middle Pleistocene epoch and the Holocene epoch. The researchers discovered that the strontium isotope compositions of dirt struck into the skull's nasal cavity, matched those of a sediment core drilled near the bridge in Harbin City. The team also dated the skull using regional stratigraphy, concluding that the cranium most likely came from the Upper Huangshan Formation, which dates back between 309,000 and 138,000 years ago. The researchers were able to narrow that time window by taking tiny samples from the skull to examine the decay rate of the radioactive element uranium, which revealed that the cranium is at least 146,000 years old and dates back to the Middle Pleistocene epoch. This age is also comparable to the Denisovan Xiahe mandible, discovered high in the mountains of western China. Given that Denisovans are also known from Asia, and that the time periods when Denisovans and the Harbin skull existed overlap, it's entirely possible that the fossil is a Denisovan. Nonetheless, these morphological features of the face could be primitive traits inherited from a common ancestor. As a result, the Harbin skull could belong to either the modern human or Neanderthal clades. 
A clade consists of species that share a common ancestor. Another 3D test, known as a geometric morphometric analysis, could shed light on the skull's identification. This analysis enables scientists to compare hundreds of traits at once and determine which traits are most important in distinguishing a new group. While there are few Denisovan remains known to scientists, the tooth from the Harbin skull can be compared to those attributed to Denisovans. Interestingly, the discovery site is located in a region known for possible Neanderthal Denisovan admixture due to environmental niche overlap. This site is nearly 3,000 kilometers, 2,000 miles east of the Denisova cave site, but it has a similar ecological environment. Harbin is also 1,000 kilometers, 600 miles, northeast of a site that yielded tools possibly associated with this population, as discussed later in the video. Nevertheless, the study's researchers stated that they considered the skull to be Denisovan and believed that Harbin could be a Denisovan, as evidenced by the very large molar with splayed roots and the close phylogenetic relationship with the Siahe jawbone in northern Tibet, which could be Denisovan. But until we have a complete Denisovan genome with a complete cranium, or better yet, a complete skeleton, we cannot properly resolve this question and can only discuss probabilities. However, this interpretation is debatable. Scientists who specialize in human evolution say that this skull could belong to the mysterious Denisovan human lineage. Given this time frame, the researchers believe that other human species, including Homo sapiens, may have interacted with this group. The region was a forested floodplain during the Middle Pleistocene era, and, like Homo sapiens, they hunted mammals and birds, gathered fruits and vegetables, and may have caught fish. Based on the skull's large size and location in northeast China, the researchers hypothesized that he could survive in harsh and cold environments, allowing this population to migrate across the northern latitude of Asia. Meanwhile, fluctuations in the Earth's orbit resulted in changes in climatic conditions, and thus vegetation patterns. This drove the migration of both hominin species to geographically overlapping areas, increasing the likelihood of interbreeding. The scientists then used the findings from their investigation to identify contact hotspots between Neanderthals and Denisovans. They selected central Eurasia, the Caucasus, the Tian Shan Mountains in western China, and the Changbai Mountains of northeastern China as potential hotspots. Identification of these habitat overlaps also assisted them in placing Denny within the climatic context, as well as confirming previous known events of genetic interbreeding. They also underlined that Denisovans and Neanderthals were likely to have made contact in the Siberian Altai region in three time periods, between 340,000 and 290,000 years ago. 240,000 to 190,000 years ago and 130,000 to 80,000 years ago. To better understand the variables that triggered this east-west interbreeding seesaw, the researchers looked at changes in vegetation patterns across Eurasia over the last 400,000 years. They discovered that increased atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and mild interglacial temperatures resulted in the eastward spread of temperate forests into central Eurasia, as well as the dispersal of Neanderthals into Denisovan territories. On the contrary, lower carbon dioxide concentrations and a harsher glacial environment may have fragmented their habitats, resulting in fewer contacts and interbreeding. Environmental-driven zonal shifts in the main overlap region of Denisovans and Neanderthals in central Eurasia which can be attributed to the response of environment and vegetation to past variations in atmospheric carbon dioxide and northern hemisphere ice sheet volume influence the timing and intensity of potential interbreeding events. In reality, some ancient skulls discovered in China are half modern and half Neanderthal. Newly discovered skulls in China show both human and Neanderthal traits, a combination not previously observed in a hominid fossil. Researchers wrote in the journal Science that the Pleistocene-era skulls had a morphological mosaic with differences from and similarities to their Western contemporaries. The brow ridges and skull mass were similar to early modern humans from the Old World, and the skulls had a flat brain pan like other Eastern Eurasian humans in the period. 
but the ear canals and wide back region of the skull were similar to Neanderthals. According to Science magazine, some specialists believe these skulls belong to Denisovans, who lived during the Ice Age. In fact, these fragmentary skull fossils could represent a new species, a kind of unknown or new archaic human that survived in East Asia to 100,000 years ago. The site location is 1,500 kilometers, 1,000 miles, east of the Denisova cave, where Neanderthals and Denisovans were known to interbreed. What's more, we know from the Neanderthal extinction that inbreeding, environment and competition from another group can cause the relatively rapid extinction of a human species. The discovery of a direct offspring of a Neanderthal and a Denisovan suggests that humans from both groups mated when they had the chance to meet up. Taken together with evidence that Neanderthals and Denisovans also mixed with ancient modern humans, this suggests that different groups of humans have always mixed when encountering each other. To determine when and where human hybridization occurred, scientists typically rely on paleogenomic study of exceedingly rare fossil specimens and their much rarer ancient DNA content. In another recent study, a group of experts took a different method. Using existing paleoanthropological evidence, genetic data and supercomputer models of the ancient environment, the team discovered that Neanderthals and Denisovans had distinct environmental preferences. More precisely, Denisovans were far more adapted to frigid habitats, such as boreal forests and tundra, than their Neanderthal counterparts, who preferred temperate woods and grassland. This suggests that their preferred habitats were geographically divided, with Neanderthals favoring southern Eurasia and Denisovans the northeast. In reality, Using realistic computer simulations, the scientists discovered that during warm interglacial eras, when Earth's orbit around the Sun was more elliptic and Northern Hemisphere summer occurred closer to the Sun, hominin habitats started to overlap geographically. When Neanderthals and Denisovans shared a common habitat, the groups had more meetings and interactions, increasing the likelihood of interbreeding. It's as if glacial interglacial temperature variations set the backdrop for a one-of-a-kind and long-lasting human love tale with genetic traces observable to this day. One of the researchers' main challenges in their work was estimating the optimal climatic conditions for Denisovans. To deal with the extremely sparse Denisovan dataset, investigators needed to develop new statistical algorithms that could also account for known ancestral links between human species. This permitted for the first time an estimate of where Denisovans might have resided. Such research is likely to give fresh light on the link between early dispersal, habitat invasion, and human genetic diversity. What's more, a re-examination of a 100,000-year-old archaic early human skull discovered 35 years ago in northeastern China reveals the startling existence of an inner ear morphology previously assumed to be exclusive to Neanderthals. The discovery calls into doubt a wide range of hypotheses on later Pleistocene human population, dispersals and interconnections based on tracking discrete morphological or genetic traits in fragmentary fossils. It implies, rather, that the later stages of human evolution were more of a maze of biology and peoples than simple lines on maps would suggest. The discovery published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences is based on new Micro-CT scans that reveal the inner arrangement of a temporal bone in a fossilized human skull, discovered during 1970s digs at the Sujiao site in China's Nihuan Basin. This site is about 1,500 miles or 2,500 kilometers east of the Denisova Cave and the Tibetan Plateau, where Denisovans have been identified. Scientists were utterly startled since they expected the scan to reveal a temporal labyrinth similar to that of a modern human, but what they observed was obviously typical of a Neanderthal. This discovery calls into question whether the layout of semicircular canals is indeed unique to Neanderthals. The semicircular canals, which are often well preserved in animal skull fossils, are vestiges of a fluid-filled sensory system that aids humans in maintaining balance when changing spatial orientations, such as when sprinting, bending over, or tilting the head from side to side. Since early CT scan research proved its existence, the presence of a certain configuration of semicircular canals in the temporal labyrinth has been regarded as sufficient to definitively identify preserved skull remains as Neanderthal. 
Almost all known Neanderthal labyrinths have this pattern. It has long been used as a distinguishing feature between ancient and modern humans. The skull at the heart of this study, known as Zhujiao 15, was discovered alongside a variety of other human teeth and bone fragments, all of which appeared to be representative of an early non-Neanderthal form of late archaic humans. This revelation simply adds to the complex web of ideas attempting to explain our origins, migration patterns and potential interbreeding events. While it's tempting to interpret the discovery of a Neanderthal-shaped labyrinth in an otherwise clearly non-Neanderthal sample as proof of population contact between Central and Western Eurasian Neanderthals and Denisovans in China. The study of human evolution has always been complicated, and these findings make it even messier. It demonstrates that human populations in the real world do not follow beautiful, straightforward patterns. Eastern Asia and Western Europe are far distant, and these migration patterns developed over thousands of years. This fossil demonstrates that one physical trait or a single fragment of DNA cannot be used to make broad inferences about hominid species migrations from one location to another. In fact, a combination of inbreeding, interbreeding with Neanderthals and habitat change could have wiped out the Denisovans of Asia before they encountered modern humans. And this could be the reason that East Asians have only tiny amount of Denisovan DNA, while they have as much Neanderthal introgression as Europeans. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.